Welcome to yet another edition of POS and to a belated happy Valentine's Day to everybody, all the lovers out there. It's just a me and Bobby episode, not lovers. Just we can spend the, the weekend together a little bit, but we're not lovers. We can make it if we try. Two lovers. Did you, know, you ever watch uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender? It's one of my favorite mm-hmm. episodes is where they're going to go through the tunnel, secret tunnel. And he's like, he starts singing, the guy starts singing a song, some bonnet guy on the guitar. And he's like, uh, there's a song that goes, two lovers, they met his one. And he goes, they go something, something, I forget the words. They go, I... secret tunnel. And he starts like rocking out. He's like the best I'm going to be honest. I don't know if that was the best description in the world. And I didn't watch every episode. Like I would catch it as my brother would was watching it. But I know distinctly the exact scene you are describing. Yeah. Like it, it, it sticks in your head that well. Because I watch, I mean, I, every couple of months I do share that clip. It's like me and my kids always will sing Secret Tunnel. We think it's maybe the that's so where, maybe that's where I saw it then. We'll share that constantly. But uh, how are you, sir? I know you had a long, busy, stupid day. I'm doing well, man. I got a good fuck. Yeah, I got a good fuck. This and nice. everything's good. And you want to just go? Um, kind of, because they're both kind of related to how I'm feeling. Oh. Is that cool? So, for starters, my fuck this is my computer's quiet quitting on me. Because you're not going to see any laser tag or anything. No, it crashed out of the Davy Mac Sports program. An episode I edited for something else is all messed up. So, after we hang up here, I get to go try to play Computer Doctor. Sounds sexy. It could be worse. I think think basically it's running out of memory because, like you pointed out, we had a lot of bells and whistles. We do a lot of bells and whistles. Probably but more I bells like bells and whistles, whistles than viewers sometimes. Yeah. But, hey, <laughs> it's about our passion. That's what it's about. It is. It is. Well, that's and your then, fuck uh, this is your computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my fuck yeah is I was not looking forward to yesterday. I uh, Valentine's Day sucks for so many reasons. All right. Like, you put aside, like, the corporate thing. Like, they've taken something that should be the purest human emotion you can share with somebody and corporatizing it that's kind of shitty you know what i mean like putting pressure on how you have to show somebody how you feel that's not where i'm coming from you know being alone on valentine's day blows like i would have celebrated by throwing rocks at couples in central park there you go see but you're not alone then if you're doing yeah exactly see you're you're uh, doing a group thing and like you know sometimes there's that like one girl you have a crush on for a while you're always like, oh, it'll work out eventually, and it never does. Like, her birthday is literally Valentine's Day, so it's like just the shitty reminder. You're in love with reminder. my cousin Eileen? <laughs> Fuck you, Bobby! No, no, unfortunately, she sounds a lot nicer than this bitch. But anyway, <laughs> I uh, so we started the dump. Steve put me in a little heart square, and I was just like, fuck this. I'm not playing along. Oh. And he was like, why not? I was like, because I, like, I don't have love. I'm down. I was, and he was like, you don't have love? And I was like, well, I mean, technically, like, yeah, like, rappers, I'm married to the game. Like, I, I commit too much to comedy. And, you know, I've accepted that. But I was supposed to, last night, do, uh, like, a guest spot with Gino and Jameson and Dombrowski. And they had two shows. And they were like, yeah, come hang and we'll work in somehow. And uh, I texted that girl like I do every year. We're still really good friends. And was like, happy birthday. And she was like, hey, thanks. I had a fun time skiing. And, like. Hope you either have a romantic or comedic day, like whatever you're looking for. So I was like, all right, cool. So I get there. um, I give Keanu and Gino a ride. And so now I know Keanu's there and I'm like, sweet, she's funny. We're probably going to split shows, which is frustrating from a time perspective. But like there's also somebody else to hang out with who's closer to my age than anybody else. We get there. Dombrowski's like, hey, you just want to host? I was like, sure. So I got to host both shows. She got to do a 10 minute spot. Everybody did like it could not have worked out into a better day. And then, as a result of me bitching about no love, several people reached out to me and were like, hey, dude, just so you know, we don't always reach out, but, like, we love what you do, and I'm not in a bad place or anything, but it was just cool yeah, that kind they of... think you were? That sounds like people thought you were going to kill yourself. No, it really, like, one person did that one time and was like, hey, I know you're just joking, but I'm guessing there's some truth behind <laughs> it. Don't do anything. And that guy was super cool, and I had to be like, yeah, you know, I try to make humor out of it. But these, for the most part, were like, no, nah, man, the hearts weren't for your love. It's for the love we feel for you. And, like... Really just very nice messages that made you feel, made me feel like a million bucks. So it was a day that could have been one of the worst. And I hate the spring in general. Spring sucks. Hate time oh. of transition. 
So that just adds into, and like yesterday was 60. So like my body goes into panic mode when it hits 60. You don't like when it's warm? I like when it's warm. I don't like the periods of transition where like you wake up and it's 50, then it becomes 70, and then it's 30 when you go to sleep. Like at the spring semesters, I would, wouldn't do well in school. Like people get seasonal depression in the winter. I get it in the spring. I'm good with it being dark. I'm good with it being bright and warm. The in between, I, I, the gray, is where I get. It. You know, I guess. Like, yeah, I get it. I'm not. I like. I think I like all the seasons. I just don't like a lot of snow, just because I know I have to like do shit. But like, I like all the seasons. I really don't mind Valentine's Day. I talked about this on Jazz and AJ. I was on there yesterday morning. I because what what. It looks it feels like you've been doing that pretty frequently. Well, that's part of the gig now. Is like I'm gone bare minimum once a week. No way! Congratulations. Maximum twice a week. I think I've said this on here. It's been no, I, know, I just I was letting you plug yourself again. I was. Oh, I don't care about that. I want to get the story. Um, my bad. It, nobody that watches this besides my brother is gonna also stream PLR Classic Rock from five thirty in the morning. I understand what animal we're dealing with. I, hope I appreciate you get all them. Seven calls that are like, I was watching POS and just wanted to prove you wrong, dude. I'm streaming PLR. Wouldn't even minutes. let them in. They started calling <laughs> chats and go, no. It's me. <laughs> like, it's all me. Pat, stop telling your friend Bobby. <laughs> go ahead. I'm the, sorry. Um, your story. So the, uh, we're on there and then uh, AJ, that's his like whole shtick, but it's real. He's like, you know, I don't, I don't like kids. I don't like love. <laughs> that kind of shit. So, Jazz was like, oh, the two guys who are going to hate love. And I'm like, oh, I don't hate love. And he's like, whatever. And like, he thinks I'm like making a new character up or something. I'm like, no, I, on the contrary, I am a sarcastic guy. I am somebody who shits out a lot of stuff, but I don't. I actually really respect Valentine's Day. I know, I know what you're saying, like commercialization, but every holiday is commercialized at this point. It doesn't really matter. So you could just choose to purchase or not purchase. I mean, but like to me, Valentine's Day as a holiday, amongst people is the only one where nobody forces their bullshit. I don't mean stores. I mean, actual humans. The only one where nobody forces their shit on you. If they're in love, their love is towards the person they're in love with. And if someone's not in love, they don't force it upon you to be, make sure you're in love. You know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those, either it's Valentine's day to you or it's not Valentine's day to you. And it's very cut and dry. I actually appreciate restaurants and things get to make their money off that time and day. But it's not like normally, unless it's a Saturday or Sunday, most of us were going to go, like, this was a Tuesday. Restaurants did well on a Tuesday. Waiters and waitresses made money. They normally wouldn't have. But it's not like I was going to go eat there on a Tuesday anyway. You know what I mean? Like, Tuesday's no, not a Tuesday. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think, honestly, the reason why it's then, and, like, we used to celebrate it, was before, like, spring wouldn't be this time of year. Like, this would be the peak of miserable season. So it was like, take a day and celebrate your love for each other. You know what I mean? Like, it was just a day for happiness and love, which is great. But I, well, I, I get where you're coming from. It was from. a good commercialization-wise. You have gone through your money-making with uh, grocery stores with your Thanksgiving, um, where regular stores, retail shops with your Christmas. January still, like, dealing with the returns and credit cards off. February had no money making. There really isn't another. Yes, there's certain occasions, but where, where's your restaurant holiday? Where, no, where's I... your florist holiday? That one is Easter, Valentine's, and then someone dies. Like that's what your thing is. So you're right. using you're using a time of year where those places don't do well, and it's almost like their Black Friday. We're dead winter. It's not warm yet. People don't want to eat. But we're getting you to come out eating and reserve. We're making some money to get us through the rest of this winter for our first quarter of our of our books. Uh, how is our florist doing? We're not doing that great. We don't have a ton of flowers here anyway. It's not like we're growing shit. But we can get roses. We can get those in. We can sell those out. And now we can do it online and ship and do all that. So it really is a smart way. If you're looking at the calendar of how to make money, it's really smart how it rolls into. Then you're going into your St. Patrick's Day helps bars a little bit, but not every place you're not really going out to eat. It is drawing some food, stuff like that. But then you're getting into your spring break time of year, then your summer vacations where people make money, and then falling back into your other shit. Your school's back to school sales. So everything's got a way of. But they worked retail. I realized everything just set up for different places to make money. I was like, okay. But I don't mind it at all. Like yesterday, okay, I'm not in a relationship. So it's like I didn't have Valentine's plans. So, but it's also Tuesday and it's, you know, I, I was going to be on the radio and then I was going to do some open mic. We were going to podcast, do that shows. I was like, oh, fuck. Dan Brown hits me up because you want to go hit some open mics. I'm like, I'll hit one. 
and there's one like 12, 15 minutes from my house. And this is my both fuck this and fuck yeah. It's a combination platter. Because I'm not really mad at either one. It's just the situations it was. So on Tuesdays, I don't usually go to open mics. A lot of the comics know that I podcast with you, and I don't really go to them. There's not a ton of them. There's a couple in Connecticut. One is about 15 minutes, 20 minutes from my house in New Haven, Connecticut, which most people know is a city. It's got Yale and a couple other places too. It's got bad sections, good sections. Downtown New Haven. One road can be Yale people. The next road can be hoodlums. Next road can be all Jewish. It's like mini New York in that way where you just yeah it's not sections, it's just whatever. You can anything you run into. The one the one Mike I was gonna go to is at a bar called Dangles. And Dangles is like a Jamaican restaurant. Mm-mm. Um but I'm it doesn't go to by the name I wouldn't go to that club. Right. But I know a lot of the young guys that go. I've been one time, we didn't do a podcast one time, and the wings were fantastic. I don't drink, so every time I go to a mic, I try to buy food, get on stuff. Something to go like, hey, I'm supporting. I, I I love the fact that you support comedy and let us, for no reason, a bunch of morons telling jokes. I know you have no one here on a Tuesday, but it's pretty cool. That you let us tell jokes in here. You make a couple bucks off us, but not really. Let me at least buy something. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm always happy when that place has good food. So a lot of times I'm buying some shit. And that's a piece of advice I actually stole from you last night because I was trying to make a good impression. I don't normally drink. Bought a drink. It, Twenty fucking dollars. Just that little. You know, it sucks. You spend the money, and you're probably sometimes when you're doing spots and small spots, especially in the city, you're just giving the money back you got. But whatever, it's yeah. worth it in the long haul because they respect the fact that you respect them. And then you tip, you know, twenty five percent, make a good impression, and well, I mean, it's not even. It's, the impression is good, but no, the right people may not notice the impression. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just showing the loyalty you have to the thing as well. I I I, I, I agree one hundred percent with that. But I also like to tip because it's also kind of my way of acknowledging to the bartender, particularly at an open mic. Like, I know you could be home doing nothing. You know what I mean? Or like, no, I they know have, you they could... have to pay bills. <laughs> they have to or like, you know what I'm for saying? Bartender. There's no home for. Depending on where you're at. You know what I'm getting at. I know what you're saying. Oh, I understand why you tip. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is I wouldn't do it for anyone's impression. I'm doing it because they're doing something for me. Maybe it's not the bartender's doing it for me. Maybe it's not the waitress doing it for me. But this venue, the people that own it, the people that hire those people, made a business decision. And one of their days of the week, they allow me to do what the fuck I do. And a lot of places don't do that. So even if they're like a shitty owner, they don't give a budget or they don't, like, they don't let us do this or do that whatever you still allow in their business plan for some reason comedy so for that i thank you because you're backing the art i love even though you're not an art person you're a business i'm a creative but you do that so the least i can do is not act like a starving fucking artist and be like i'm above you i use your venue why should i buy anything while eight people sit in the corner and pick out a pitcher of water fuck you i will buy wings or a burger or something I make sure I do that all the fucking time. That also comes from the fact that I ran comedy clubs. I think so. Therefore, I think of that way a little bit more. Anyway, so we're going to this place, Dangles, and we're going to go there. Usually it's like five or six comics. The comic who's going to host it isn't the normal host. The whole, normal host, I think, has a girlfriend. And he's like, I'm doing something. This other, this newer dude named uh, uh, Tyler McDonald. He's a good young kid, but he's goofy as I've fuck. I've been to like, his farm. In, what? Been to his dad's farm. Yes, his dad's farm is fantastic. You know, um, old McDonald. It's I know it, it's also not. I want to say that's not the guy's had five different names. It might not be his real name. It might be Ronald McDonald. Anyway, hell. Um, so <laughs> it's like, you want to change the first name? That's my whole flip around. Anyway, so Tyler was supposed to be hosting it. He does goofy shit. Like he'll he does the prop things. He does silly stuff. Like he will take his shirt off and wear a dog collar and all of a set. I'll pull out a dildo out of his pants. Okay. Good silly shit or bad silly shit? It's gonna be good. Okay. I get I get with that. Ray he's, Catolo. If, if he, he's gotta continue to do it because if he listens to every asshole at open mic who says, Oh, that's dumb, don't do that, he'll never develop this act. So if this is where his humor lies, I'm I'm all for it. I've told him, I said, Go goof, man. Just if this is how you find funny, go for it. You're not gonna get any fucking laughs here. People are going to be probably, some comics might, but they're not going to laugh for the right reasons. You need to perfect this. You can't, you I don't like it when a comic practices their act in front of a mirror. I 
I really don't understand how you pull a dildo out in front of your parents. You know what I mean? You gotta be on stage, figure out the timing and all that shit, whatever. So he's trying to do his thing, but he's gonna be hosting this one. And like I said, Dangles is in the uh, the, the an urban section of New Haven. It's in a Jamaican bar. Usually when you go there, it's just like the Jamaican folks, Jamaican bar. Uh, what you call it? I think if I'm if they're not Jamaican, I'm sorry. I just assume they are. It looks like the decor. If it's Haitian, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be from racist. I, fucking the wings you got were they jerk? You could order jerk. I would assume they, it's Jamaican then. As no, well. because you don't know New Haven. You can order jerk. Fucking. There's drink communities around places, so other restaurants do it all the time. No. No, you can't. You can okay. only order jerk chicken from Jamaicans. <laughs> Makes no sense. I know That's the one line in the sand truck. I draw. That's the one line. I'm like, no. There's a I know a Mexican guy with a truck that sells jerk chicken. <laughs> Down there, they don't give a fuck. It's like my mom makes jerk it, chicken. Bitch is Irish. Yeah, like, make jerk chicken. It's fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> corn beef pretty... jerk. Jerk corn beef is fucking jerk. That will change your life. That was my nickname in high school, Jerk Corn Beef. I was doing all black school. They, they didn't know many slurs. <laughs> you know what the Northern Irish hate more than Irish? <laughs> People who make there jerk, you know, corn beef. Corn beef <laughs> but, so, so anyway, you're at Dangles. Right. And it's normally typically an urban black, Jamaican. Look, the black, so, side Jeff is a black bartender and maybe one person off the street sitting there as nine comics. Sadly, no, no, in a one room place. Like there's no second room. We are standing in the middle of what the restaurant part would be in a very small room. Like um, like the show we did on Saturday, like a third of that is the room. It's a small, tiny little restaurant. We can not take out, but I'll sit down. So as me and Dan Brown are walking in, we look in the window, and there's a lot of a lot of people in there. And we're like, and we see like heart balloons and a lot of older black couples that look kind of like boxables, a whole bunch of them. And I'm like, Oh no, they're having a Valentine's. Don't they didn't... drink anything, Dan. So I walk they all in. look like the Huxtables. <laughs> I... Wrong term. I forget some. First of all, to be clear, Cosby raped people. Heathcliff Huxtable was a wonderful man. Ah, uh, bullshit. <laughs> I heard about his barbecue sauce. And also his gynecology place in the basement. <laughs> what the fuck? What kind of business plan is that? Anyway, we go in and I look around the corner. Is Tyler is just sitting there. The only white person in the room. He's got the notebook till I go, say, hey, what are we doing? He goes, I don't know. I go, I would say no. I would decide that we just don't do this. I don't know if you want to make that call. Like, I'm I was kind of waiting to see if comics showed up. I'm not arguing with you. (laughs) Like, I kind of like we're both like in agreement. They got short. They go, we're gonna ruin everyone's Valentine's Day. Because they're not, we're not, listen, it's not like we're putting on a comedy show. It's not like everyone's there going to be a good comic. There are a lot. This white kid pulls down his pants and whips out a dildo for fucking black couples who are trying to have Yo! a It's going to be a hate crime. This kid can't, you know, he won't even know why. You know what I mean? So I'm like, why don't we have to do it? He goes, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. We'll shut it down. I'll wait around here for a couple So I'm like, fuck, we'll leave. So I was like, ah, fuck this because. I was looking to work on a joke or two. I kind of just wanted to hit a mic. I was having fun. And I was like, I knew I was not doing anything today. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck. I wanted a mic. Couldn't hit a mic. Kind of bummed. So not really a fuck this, but like, ah. It sucks that there was a communication. Like, I don't think this restaurant is decided on purpose to take a bunch of reservations. I don't think it was. If by the read of the room, I think there were other places weren't available. And this was like couples that had made a last ditch. Oh, let's go out. So this place didn't take reservations. You could sit and eat. Whatever, it was fine. It was, but I was like, so as I'm walking out with Dan, another comic we know, Dan Shea, who's been out here before, he's walking down there and he's like, "You guys leaving?" Like, I explained to him. He goes, oh, "He goes, you guys want to go to Hungry Tiger? That's an open mic in Manchester, which is an hour away from us towards Harf." I look okay. at Dan and I go, "What are you thinking?" He goes, "I don't care. I'm like, fuck it. Let's just go to that one." And I haven't been to that one in fucking years because it's got weirdo hosts and it's an odd little bar. Strange. It's also a farther away. I'd rather work on shit close. I'll go far for a mic if the mic is worth it. And I'm not saying it's not worth it now. I just in my head from the, the people I knew that ran it aren't even doing comedy anymore. Now other people are running it. That makes sense. But it was just like, oh, cool. It'd be fun to go up there and do that. Kind of like the elbow room. No. The people who knew it when you were last there don't run the room anymore. I was no, just making a joke that it's. The people that are running it now, at least, Hungry Tiger, 
um, aren't running it like against every logic and reason. Like the bar is on set is an open mic. You know, elbow room, and if this is too small for people that are listening, but elbow room is doing an open mic and also doing two shows on the weekend when they shouldn't be doing anything. And the lineup for all three, the open mic and the two shows are the same fucking thing. <laughs> it's just like you pay 20 bucks one night for the same thing you want for free. And they're not even doing better material. But anyway, I want to shit on them, whatever. So comedy's comedy. But as we go up to the Hungry Tiger, Dan and I are chatting, whatever. And we're talking about music for some reason. And then you know that game you play, the Mexican game, where you take a movie title and you put the word Mexican in it? You've heard of that game before? Yeah, like they did oh, with that bar. Hungry Tiger, Sleepy Mexican. Right. But no, but you don't do it that way. You don't change everything. Like in the, a Mexican game, Star Wars is the Mexican Wars or the Star Mexican. You literally just throw in one word, try to make it funny. You know, it's like, like, uh, like, like throw mama from the Mexican or throw Mexican from the train. You just do a dumb thing in the title. You know what I mean? Nah, Mexican I got one fellow. for you. Mexican. Mexican. That's usually where every fucking hack goes, but the fourth time, I'm happy you went to third. Anyway, that uh, was a uh, Titanic. And believe me, that's where the heck goes afterwards. But I call him. Hey, hey, uh, Mexican. That one oh, was dear. Avatar. Uh, my mother was Mexican. Avatar I... Mexican. <laughs> that was Avatar too. <laughs> See, yeah, there was more to the bit than just the hack. I like to take a hack premise and try to go somewhere you want. I, I like to take a hack premise and do the hack one time. <laughs> well, I'm gonna hack my wrist. Not you, you fucking ass. Down the river, across the stream. I really <laughs> wish bad worst things happened to you yesterday. Um, <laughs> me too. You and me both. I ended the audience. I wanted to get mad at your story about that, but you were happy enough to have that thing. But I wanted to, like, if I was ever driving two people and you had to start thinking maybe they will let me do both shows, I would leave them on the side of the road and do the show myself. <laughs> to be honest with you, I was just excited to hang out with everybody. It's and I, and I got, and I'm not saying, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying, when you're like, oh, she's mm. here and she's very funny, don't get me wrong, that's what you're saying. In your head, so you're like, I uh, open up to split it. I'm like, if I'm driving to do them there, we're both on both shows, or if you're on both. You know what I mean? Like, I'm oh, yeah, I get that. There. I'm partying I mean, a couple on Valentine's Day to their love thing. Fuck off. If, yeah, when you put it like that, it's one thing, but Gianu is not a normal couple. You're fuck off. But did you just do that? I just did that. You just ship them. Not on purpose, but it. No, worked. you. No, you did. It. I wanted to do G- Gino and Keanu, but I no, just said Gianu, and it's so much better. No, that means that Gino told you start slipping into the culture. I want people to know that. I wish, I wish it was that cool. It was just I'm. Keanu, fuck off. Well, we didn't think we ever would, but I think somehow we're gonna get our cut clip of us put on Kevin Brown. <laughs> that was you that said that shit, and me going fuck that. Gianu. I'm like doing this. It's like a photo of the two of them. I'm going to text thing. him right now. <laughs> I don't need that right now. Um, so we get to the Hungry Tiger. Doing the read. We did that. With, instead of the Mexican game, we did a game where we put the word retard in a rock song. And it was very fun. <laughs> and then I just started doing the, uh, I'm like, well, Led Zeppelin. But that, not even the words change. It just goes, hey, hey, going to be a retard. That would work. But I didn't even do words. I went. You know what I'm <laughs> and then I. <laughs> he just like almost oh, cracked the car. Okay. Oh, crack. Damn it! <laughs> oh, to that yell. It's hilarious. <laughs> so, so we just we get there, whatever. We go into the hungry tiger, um, and there's some comics I haven't seen that go there in a while. I don't you go up that way, whatever. Um, and it's fun. Some comics I haven't seen. I get to work on some stuff. It's great. The the hosts that host it are a couple, and not say anything bad against them but it did give a vibe like one of the couple kind of probably thought they were going to get someone else to host so they could have valentine's day together and the <laughs> other was kind of like wait this is lovely that we're together aren't we so they were trying to also host together on stage so i asked one of the guys there avery was there and i got to chat with avery and i was like so this normally goes i've never seen them do this so they were trying something new and they don't have they might have relationship chemistry. They did not have hosting a show together chemistry. So it was a lot of where it felt like maybe the guy wrote a script for them to do and the girl wasn't remembering the lines and then the guy was getting kind of mad. So I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was fucking great. And then so 
then the girl also likes to play guitar. She's like, well, I'm also going to play a song. And then, like, her song is like, she does like this Bruce Springsteen thing where she explains the song and sings the song, but she doesn't really need to because, like, she'll be like, I wrote this song when I was in the sixth grade. It's about butts on the bus. I wrote it because I saw a lot of butts on the bus. And she goes, butts on the bus. They're butts on the bus. I'm in sixth grade. Butts on the bus. And I wish I was like making this up. <laughs> and then people just say it. So the guy who's going first, the first topic is the guy who's like a, I love him. He's like a New Haven area like legend guy, Brian Glass. I got to have Brian on here because he's fucking hilarious. And he's a kind of a tough. He, he doesn't pull any punches. His act is great because he calls himself the B man on purpose to be a dick. He's like, I'm a B man right here. And, he's like, and he calls every woman a babe. He's like, babe. He's just like, he's like, he looks like me. He's like, white ball guy. It's just hilarious. He has all these, you know, terms and things he does. And he goes, uh, hey, nice fucking song. <laughs> this is even like sugar coated. <laughs> he, goes, what's your, he goes, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite note? <laughs> Excuse me. He's like, what do you really love? You're an A person, you're an E. And so then people start arguing and he goes, he's like, uh, I'm an A minor. I go, is aren't those the ones you're not allowed to be near? And he got quiet and the bar goes, Oh, pedophile. I'm like, yeah, we're all on board. Like, a minor. So brilliant. But so it was fun to do that, but it was more fun is that Mike was like very quiet. There's ten drunks at the bar, like a somewhat attractive bartender. Once again, I go there and I buy a burger, they have a full kitchen. The guy who's cooking, he, I said to Avery, the food's not bad here. Goes, you see the chef? I'm like, after I ate, thank God. Like, the chef, the chef looked like the Keebler elf he drank. Like, a very short, gray-haired, weird-looking thing. But he made a great patty belt. So I'm like, whatever. I was fine with it. Whatever. He does his thing. But I'm sitting next to Avery, and he'd be, like, real quiet. Because the comic's talking. No one's really laughing. All the comics are kind of going, ha ha. You're running through your set. And then the people at the bar are drunk quietly trying to watch like Biggie's basketball. And once in a while, a bartender would say something out loud that would be kind of funny because it wouldn't mean anything to the act. She's like, I can't believe you said that. And the comic would stop and go, I'm sorry, there's something wrong. And she's like, no, I was talking to Joe. <laughs> it would just like weirdly heckle wrong. And there's a comic that looks kind of like Dan Brown named Kevin Doty. He's also got long blonde hair, but he keeps it in a ponytail. And he used to do meth and he talks about his act. And he wears like a hat and he wears like bigger shirts. I said to Avery, he looks like if Dan Brown was in Slapshot. Now, if you know, it was a decent line. It was fine. I said quietly. Mm -hmm. Now, you know Avery. We've had Avery on here before. Avery has one of the most distinct laughs there is. And oh. It's more like, <laughs> it goes higher. And we hear it at mics all the time. And everyone loves to laugh. But other comics sometimes will yell, what are you laughing at? Like, at him. Now, I told him this line in the very beginning of a setup. Not even a premise yet. I whisper this joke. Avery goes, <laughs> and the comic stops and goes, Avery, what are you even laughing? Like, I didn't even start the joke. <laughs> Avery's such a good guy. He's like, getting ready to answer. I go, hey, man, it's my bad. I I said something to him. And he goes, oh, okay, Pat. <laughs> I don't know why I he, goes, he goes, it's okay. I go, no, it's my bad. It's just my fault for being funnier than you. And of course, the guy's like, fuck off. <laughs> and I was just like, go back to your thing now. Do that little thing you were trying. He walked off stage and he goes, uh, hey, what did you say? And I told him, he goes, oh, can I use that next time Dan Rounds in the room and I'm there? I'm like, yeah, 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 of course you can. Yeah. I go, hey, I don't think you use it anywhere else, but like, you're, you're fine. With it. <laughs> and then he was doing jokes about meth and um, sugar and the differences because people are like, I'm a sugar addict. And he's like, I was on. I did all the drugs. It's like, I never did this. I never did that. You ever soak <laughs> dick for sugar? He didn't go there, thank goodness. He kind of went more into the, uh, more of like the the addiction, like feels. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, you know, it, 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 so we got to say that you should go the other way a little bit. I'm like, well, to be fair, I've never seen anybody with meth foot. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he goes, can I use that? I go, I can't. I can't use this. But, but it was fun to just be at the mic. It was cool that we got the disappointment of like, ah, I was going to do a mic and then love ruined it. And I'm like, oh, no one's in love in Manchester. And then we go there and then have fun. And I had a good time. So I enjoyed myself. I was exhausted because I done radio all morning. I was like, fuck it. I'll get home. I'll chill. And I have nothing going on today, which is nice. Because the rest of the week, it's all 
business. That's awesome. Because I got comics tomorrow. Um, you and I are Friday and Saturday. Um, Sunday, I'm on the radio. Monday, I'm on the radio. Then I got my open mic Monday night. And then Tuesday, oh, Tuesday, I'm on Jazz Nation. So like, I'm just running right through the week. So that's awesome. One side bit from my show last night that I think you'll appreciate in particular. I have a friend who I don't even know how we met, but like we're friends on Snapchat and Instagram and she's does poetry and stuff, but it's all like very sad. And the tragedy in her life is she was in love with a guy and he died. I don't know all the details, but like, that's what I'm able to pick out. And she posted something very sad about like, I still haven't forgiven you for leaving me here. Like, you know, and it was again, very poetic, very beautifully done. And I sent her a message and was just like, Hey, I know nothing's going to make you feel better today. Or like about this dick. No, 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 no. (laughs) Um, I remember one time she was like homeless and was like, "I need money for food. I'm dying here." And like was being melodramatic. And I sent her ten bucks and was like, "Get McDonald's." She was like, "What? What do you want in return?" I was like, "Nothing." Like this wasn't a sex exchange. Like I would be like, "I want these posts to end." (laughs) I'm getting sad. No, it's beautiful. And like what I said to her was like, "I just hope you know." Was she? Was he alive when she was homeless? No, no, this was like she went into sure. like a whole spiral like after. I know them. But uh, <laughs> I, so I was like, hey, I just want you to know, like, even though I know nothing's going to make you feel better, just I hope you can keep in mind that like a lot of people see you turning your pain into beautiful art and using it as, a, as an example. Second show in between comics, I'm about to bring Gino up. I go, you know what? That was true. Let me see if I can turn some of the pain I'm feeling today into some beautiful art. Like comedy, right? So I go, ah, I tell you what, guys, I am just so full of the spirit of the holiday right now. How about you? And everybody goes, yeah, because, you know, it's six couples or whatever. And I go, I cannot wait to kill myself. And they, all hey. just, <laughs> they all go, what? And I, go, and I did my suicide joke. And I'll be honest, it, it did not work. It did not work. Sometimes you should sift and fine tune that art before you. <laughs> Oh, speaking, right speaking of comedy, you're gonna do this. I know I said it to you, and I don't, you know, you're gonna go off oh, shucks, whatever. But you had a fucking great set when we did our show together on Saturday, man. You really did. Oh, thank you so much, man. It was a lot of fun. And to be honest with you, I really didn't show it Saturday night, but it meant a lot you saying that because the last time we worked together, I feel like I've come a long way. Yeah. And it also, the, it was a better circumstance. So I was better, all this stuff, too. But yeah, you put the work in, but your the jokes are crisp, clear. There, there, you you are going with a darkness, but you deliver it with a light. So <laughs> therefore, people can no. But it, that's the hardest thing to do when people go dark and then they deliver dark. There's no way for the a person that's not used to having dark humor to be able to absorb that without just feeling like shit. <laughs> but you give it in a way where you put a lot on you, so that you're not really shitting on them. But you had fun with the crowd a little bit. You did a great job. You followed the person that was she was a sweet woman. She was like, had done it five or six times, and she brought. If there was seventy people there. She brought thirty five of them. So I mean, like, <laughs> it was it was a tough thing to go into. She did that, but she was like, you learned about her bush and her poop, and then all that stuff for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it was. And you had to do your thing. You did great. Well, thank you. And one of my favorite parts was the look of assurance you gave me right before I went on stage as he was bringing me up. Because I, I knew you were gonna be good. Not even no 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 no. It was. We, you had heard the whole back speech that I was given that no one else was about. Don't be <laughs> racist in my room. And then he brought me up on stages. Madison Square Garden, The Round, L.A.'s Comedy Store. He's played none of them. And I gave you a look like, I'm going to be a little racist. And you <laughs> gave me a look like, please. <laughs> and that guy was cool. And I understand he's just worried about his room when he gave you a little speech. But I've always told people, always say, sure, but then always be you. Don't be disrespectful. If the guy says, don't say this one word, you don't normally say that one word. Don't choose today to do it. But if someone says, hey, this room doesn't like this, Mm -hmm. unless the same people are always there, even that doesn't mean anything to me because it's never been delivered by me. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do my act. You hired me to do my thing. Trust in me that I'm going to be fine. Because you and I, our both our acts went against everything he said, and he had no issue with us at all because it was fun. He had a borderline issue with me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he, he, uh, he was just—he uh, was making a joke with that. Because he did jokes that were racially. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 
and not to be like arrogant, but honestly, I looked at that crowd and went, I have performed for these people a hundred times. Yeah, sure. At least. Like I know knew the crowd you knew the crowd that it was Massachusetts rednecks that wanted to pretend like they were. Well, really yeah, rednecks. and when you go redneck, it was Massachusetts what they Western Mass what the people themselves consider to be middle class or a little lesser than, but they probably all own homes. But they're not, not they got homes from the parents or they're not the best homes, but they've got, you know, two incomes coming in. Uh, they all have babysitters. They're there to have fun, but they're also a lot of them there to support their friend they've known since high school. And I'm gonna give her credit. She that was tough. That's a tough spot to be in. You're in a place, you know three other comics are legitimately comics. You're put on this show, you're nervous, you're scared. She she was smart, she came to the wise man, and I fucking gave her the advice and helped her out a little bit. She appreciated it too. But I was like, I had I, I knew I had to I had to do that, but I didn't talk her down and put her at ease. We were gonna have a, t- a trouble on that stage, you know. I, I like to think we were the perfect dose of medicine for her. Your technical points of like how to handle it and how to approach the show and my advice of just ah, hey, you're gonna be great. <laughs> I, I had to pepper that in a lot too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even came over to help you because I was like, he can't even say this enough because he doesn't believe in it. <laughs> I no, see, I believed they, and I never once said she was going to be great. I, I go, they're going to love you. If they don't, they're terrible friends. Of yeah. And then you know, of course, I go, and you know what? Didn't think the show was a little long. He got tired for me, but I still had a fun time. It was you had a great fun. set. But, it, but yes, I appreciate that. But I've been running this set. I know it's going to be great for the weekend. It does better than that. But it does better when they're not two and a half hours. In. And I could tell you where they got tired, too, in your set. You could see, like, the exact moment where everybody just was like, all right, we're done. Yep. Right. And for they the still second, stayed with you, but. Listen, the second I, I finished talking about David Hasselhoff, they were kind of checked out. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but yeah, it was Hasselhoff. Exactly. They right. love that joke. It was great. But Believe they, like, me, I, they had all come up to me and told me about that joke. Usually people are coming up to do the closing stuff, but like they were into it, but some of them were even leaving. It was just a long, it was a long night, but it was fun. I appreciate it. It was a good time. I'm looking forward to this weekend. It's going to be a good fucking time with these shows here. Um, a lot of it's going to be just fun. And then, um, um, just as you said that, like random people check in once in a while. There's a woman that every like six, seven months a comic that will just reach out to me, but she's always got like every issue in the world. So she'll do the, hey, how's it going with you? And I just know to go, what's wrong? <laughs> and I just, I'm gonna read long posts. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, oh, shit, there was something. What did I want? Damn it! There was something I wanted to bring up. Somebody said something. What the fuck? God damn it. I'm not gonna remember now. Shit. Maybe maybe it'll come to you. Oh well you do. You know what a Memphis rap sigil is? Rap sigil? Mm-hmm. No. A Memphis rap sigil. No. So I know Mem- I know I know all three I know two I know two of those words. We may need to get Brandon on. I mean possibly. Because <laughs> all right, so I fell down this rabbit hole and it's basically okay. the rap dot mp three conspiracy. Are you familiar? No. All right. So what the theory is, is back in the <laughs> late 90s, early 2000s, and you like rap, so you may be familiar. Do you remember like uh, 3-6 Mafia? Oh, I know the Memphis rap scene. I didn't know the third word. <laughs> so no, no, no. But in particular, do you remember 3-6 Mafia? Hmm. Obviously, there's some demonic undertones to their name. 3-6-6-6-6 Satan, right? Oh, I didn't even think of that. But what was I popular... thought it was just the address of their mouth. No, and and originally, oh, that was pretty good. I didn't realize you were doing a joke. <laughs> originally, he says, where should I send the fish heads? He said, Mafia. It's pretty good. Originally, uh, they were called Triple Six Mafia, just to make it really clear. But uh, the thing was called. You know uh, their two most famous songs. The uh, Stay Fly. And then I guess number two would probably be that lollipop song they did in 2008. Possibly. I'd like to think number two is Mark Henry, the world's strongest man's theme song. The WWE. Slob on my knob, like corn on the cup. It was hilarious when they got them to do it. Was that it? <laughs> no, theirs was the, mm, get out the way. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, it was a song about Mark Henry. 
Like they got That's hired awesome. to do that. My personal favorite is I bet you won't hit a motherfucker, hit a motherfucker. But uh, so the thing was, what you would do is create a rap sigil, which was a tribute to a demon, probably Lucifer, and you would create a uh, demonically charged track. The better the track did, you would be more successful. So a lot of people point at Three Six Mafia and go, they kind of kept popping, unpopping, repopping, unpopping, almost like they were releasing those tracks. And the way you created a rap sigil is uh, there. There are a lot of different techniques, but the main, like the most extreme way, would be you would murder somebody and record it. You would take the sound of the murder and mix it into a beat. You didn't really murder. You're just joke. No, 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 no. This is the real rap sigil. This is how they committed it. Um. So Who you did murder, murder? Nobody you've heard of. So it didn't really work out, but let me just explain. How's it illegal? <laughs> Through the demon. I forgot demons are genes. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now you're speaking Kanye's language. Um, <laughs> well, people are watching. Now they, have, they have, Listen, he's saying that helped us forget that whole fucking Keanu shit. <laughs> Keanu. Uh, so basically, you would murder somebody, you'd record it, you'd take that sound and turn it into a beat. Then you would go back to the location of the murder with the body still there. Obviously you would record you and your friends rapping over said beat and you would release the track as a mixtape or you'd sell it. And the better it did, the more you'd get charged. And then there were different ways. Like, excuse me, one of three, six mafias, they used a murder from this movie Halloween and then they rapped over it. And like, that's how they did. Oh, because they used it from a movie. That one. Yeah. Like, but, there were examples of the extreme. You could have done one from Schindler's List. They could have had a lot of hits. There's, again, speaking Kanye's language. <laughs> I don't know there's why a, I went two twice in a row. I couldn't think of another good murder movie. There's a, there's one film, it's one I found of a guy. He used. Did you ever see the gore? Three Russians, one hammer, or something. It's very. I've never seen it. Garrett said he saw a clip of it once, and he still thinks about it sometimes. Like it's very oh, gore. Some, but they took that audio and rapped over it. But anyway, they would do that, and then they'd create a super track. The rap.mp3 conspiracy is somebody took one of those and boiled it down to one singular beat. It's like an auto tuny type beat, and it is in every rap song that was released in a certain era. What well, is? We can't listen to it, right? There's there are several rap.mp3 alleged tracks, but no one knows the real thing. There are also a lot of theories out there. Like one theory is, it was a cell phone of a lost teen was found, and it was the only thing on it. And like other ones, but the main theory is the Memphis rap sigils. But the reason I bring that up is here's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> in New York City, there in Hudson Yard, there's a monument. It's a bunch of stairs. It's like a honeycomb out. And they had to shut it down because so many people jumped off of it, like and committed suicide. Okay. Right. So that's probably a pretty charged place. You and I go there. We record a TikTok video. At okay? Murder Town? At the Murder Monument. Yeah, yeah. It's still okay. there. You can walk right up to it. You can't go in. Okay, hang on here. I out. like murder. But we think it's suicide. We didn't commit the suicide. The other people did. Yeah, but then that'll make me want to commit suicide. No, 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 no. You don't. But then get... maybe. I get influenced. But, like, it's just you. <laughs> well, it is. They don't let anybody up there. They, they went in really, Rome. <laughs> I, I did try to go up there today, and they were like, no, 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 no. We're serious about that. Nobody. Well, they looked at you and then your, your, your tweets. And they're like, like, all right. We <laughs> heard you in Yonkers last night, dude. Did you send a sadder woman than you, 10,000 McDonald's, to get on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but we go there. But you offer dick. <laughs> we record a TikTok video. Ideally, we find one of the news reports about one of the, you know, bad things that happened there, and we mix it into the sound somehow, and then we release it as a TikTok video, and then boom, we've done the first comedy sigil, POS blows up straight to the moon. But the reason I want to bring Brandon is, is he knows the dark arts better than I do, and I don't want to make a deal with a demon. I don't want my soul involved, okay? I just want to know if we can get the benefit without, you know, the hell. But part. you said those those songs aren't famous. Do you know who Three Six Mafia is? Yeah, but they're not. They're famous for a fake one. We're going to a real murder. But we're not committing the murder. We can just go to the set of Halloween. And do it. Okay, I I'm on board. I just want to make sure again. You know me. I don't like fucking with demons or the dark arts. You so. brought this up. 
I just want to make sure through a verified source. I didn't we're say, not hey, gonna... Bobby, can we do demon shit? But, or is it possible, like, if we went to a place where a lot of good things happened, could we make, like, an angelically charged track? And Where's the a place opposite of good effect? things? You tell me where good was, and I'll be able to tell you where bad was, too. Aberdeen, Mississippi. At Camp Friendship. Father Tim Murphy gives a bunch of foster care kids a week of camp in the woods for $10. And for and how they week. pay that back. <laughs> Same way that girl thought she had to. <laughs> no, it's basically through volunteer work, unfortunately. What's the with $10 in people all the time? $10? It, for McDonald's, dude. No, I meant you just oh, said it again. I see. Literally, yeah. you brought up $10 again. Ooh. Somebody was getting $10. They thought they had to do something in return, but it was just Ooh. a nice gesture. Ooh, but like the Catholics have a history, so I got to be careful. What's their history? Okay. How right. much time? So on the Mark have? Henry song is some bodies. Oh, you're gonna beat bodies up. Gonna get there. Gonna get a handed to them. But it's they sing. Somebody's gonna get their ass to Somebody's <laughs> gonna get. Mark Henry comes out all tough. You know he wrote. Hell I remember, yeah. I, I've been I rewatched wrestling in 2006. They actually got three six mafia. This is right after the hustle book chip. They just got in music mafia to perform live in SmackDown. And I'm like, what happened to them? They're standing there as Mark Henry comes out. It wasn't even like a WrestleMania, it was just a regular Friday night UPN show. <laughs> but the guys you're telling me they're like demonic, also are so <laughs> Yeah, we'll see Mark Henry's theme song. It's not even for their own album. It's called it's from the um um what was it? Rec Oh, what's the name of the album? Oh, Reckless Intent, but re Reckless spelled like W R. <laughs> the Wrecking Things. You can get that and Tatanka's new theme song on that CD. <laughs> Maybe he's a demon too. Yeah, well, what I'm saying, if there's any demons out there, they're Vince McMahon. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, I could see that. But also, what do we, we know about demons? what do we know about Mark Henry? World's strongest man. What do we know about demons? They possess I, what type? What what type like of strength? World's strongest not demons. What type of strength do they possess? Demonic strength, Pat. Mm hmm. Shall we continue? Do I, I believe in demons? Demonic strength. Do it's, I believe in um, what Jimmy the Greek said? Just an extra ten. Tell Gino that joke, and he'll laugh forever. I was he talking about demons? Oh, Mark Henry's not a demon. Oh. Don't make me explain racist jokes. Let me just tell. Um, <laughs> I was trying to tell you where the strength came from. <laughs> I'm putting it together now. <laughs> but Mark, Demons. Mark Henry was the world's strongest man. Or demon. Well, Demons aren't real. Right. We don't We don't think they are. But no, no. Do you we... really believe in that? I, dead serious. I'm not going to make a joke. You really believe in a demonic creature existing and if so where is it i don't know if i believe in like an actual creature that's what i'm asking like what do you think a demon is like a soul i, I, I think it's like a lost person probably like so it's like a ghost guy been given over to dark influences so it used no, to no, be like, a I think it's, like i think it's a human i think in today's oh, it's not day and age no no no, no. Okay. i don't think like I don't think that type of demonic possession exists. I don't think somebody takes over your body. Oh, no, no, However, no I, didn't mean that. I thought you were saying, I don't believe that. I thought you meant like, you know, there's ghosts. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you meant it was like an evil ghost to the demon. No, I mean, like, that's, that's like the storybook version, I'd say. I think in reality, there are demons, like people who have given over to dark influence, whether it be Satan or just the world itself. I think drugs have a lot to do with it. I think you see a lot of those people like <coughs> in New York City, just not the ones that are like bent over rocking because they're so heroined out. I'm talking about the ones that are like conniving, walking down the street that are like looking for somebody to rob so they can get the rest of their drugs. Like, I think that's a demon, somebody who's not being guided by right and wrong, but a desire or a need for something is is what I would describe as a demon today. You know, okay. I just think that's a bad fellow. Yeah, I think there's probably something... misunderstood, and he's probably also just a comic, and he probably commented a lot on my post about Jim Jeffrey special today. I didn't think I commented on it, did I? No, 
You did not. Oh, okay. But a former yeah. guest of the show, rapper slash comedian, did, and he wouldn't stop. The Joker? Rapper. Okay. Um. Oh. He's been on here with his uh, his lovely girlfriend. My boy. He just won't stop explaining to me about Jim Jeffries. <laughs> you, like, he, does he know you've worked with him? Didn't even his, what he needed didn't even need that. He was explaining to me that like I, none of Jim Jeffries' work was any good, and his first album was terrible because all it did was regurgitate the things from this TV show. And I'm like, well, I thought it was cool that all the jokes I heard him tell were then on the were on the um, show, and I got to see them come to life. And he's like, well, only his first three albums were any good. And I'm like, I've enjoyed all this stuff. It's just me. I mean, like Louis, I've enjoyed everything. But if I rank them and there's some like more than the others, of course. But I've enjoyed it all. But this new one is fucking bananas. He is, because Mark wrote, you know, I'm not saying anything against him, but Mark wrote, it was like a thing where you hadn't watched a guy in 10 years and started saying shit about him. He's like, oh, is he still kissing the Hollywood elitist ass? And I don't want to spoil anything for anybody watching this, but I will spoil this don't, one don't, thing. Don't, 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 please don't. What? I haven't got a chance yet. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not spoiling anything. It's one line. This won't spoil a joke. You will enjoy it. But if you think he's doing the Hollywood elitist thing, at one point he goes, it's just like, it's so double standard with baldness. You know, a guy's balding and everyone just you know doesn't care. You can make fun of all you want. Don't care. One woman... Goes bald. No one loses their mind. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Jada Pinkett Smith, the bald headed fuck. That's I'm reading it in like ta- you know, in captions. He just screams at so he's not dealing with he's not kissing Hollywood's ass for me. <laughs> I thought the heartbreak was gonna end on Valentine's Day, Pat. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're telling me one of my favorite comedians was trashing one of my favorite comedians. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Literally, one of the guys who's a reason I decided to become a stand-up comic is, ah, oh, man, man, that. Jim Smith. No, I I love Jim Jeffries. No, but he was trashing Jada Pinkett Smith. No, I meant random. Oh, one of my favorite random. comics. No, he wasn't is... trashing him. He was just telling me how he's lost his way, and I'm like, you haven't watched the last. You obviously haven't watched this since like 2015. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get that. I'm gonna have to check it out. I'm literally looking forward to. One you like three. jokes about Greta Thunberg? You're gonna have a good time. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I remember being at a buddy's house. He was renting in college. We were so hungover from drinking the night before. We literally couldn't move. Like we had to do that recovery day until we went out and drinking again. And we watched the entire season of Legit. Good and I job. went. You know what? I didn't know what I was gonna do with my life. I kind of in the back of my head went, "I want to be." A comedian this solidified it that is the life i want like and that's when i kind of you know what i mean like wasn't like oh god now i'm gonna be a comedian and that was kind of like the moment i was like oh yeah this is definitely it and uh that night we went out and did what i called a jim jeffrey shot which has no reference to the show it was just i wanted him to do jaeger bombs with me we did about 13 of those and that's a real hangover yeah that's tough stuff that's seven and a half red bulls no i watched that show that and much. i thought two things i thought one wow it really is these stories he made them come to life. It's pretty cool that he tells on stage. And then two, I was running around with a retarded voice going, You're fired <laughs> at people a lot. For maybe like a week or two, I wouldn't stop doing it because of that tremendous scene or episode. But um yeah, One I enjoyed of the show. to this day, it's hard to beat the laugh I get from season two when he's on the pier and he finally kisses the girl and it cuts to the credits and then it cuts back and she goes, Boy. There sure are a lot of beeps on the pier tonight. (laughs) It is one of the best laughs I've ever gotten. Um, So you and Mark will be fine because Mark said season one sucks, but season two is fantastic. So he would agree with you on that part. Not that you didn't like season one, I'm saying, but you liked season two's joke right there a lot. So he'll talk to you about that. We could talk about that joke. and Yeah. What's wrong with the rest of his opinions on Jim Jeffries? No, I just see, I just allow him. I didn't argue with him. I just said, hey, man, that's it, whatever. And then other people chimed in. And I'm like, hey, I just posted, I like this. Everything from the fact that I'm not going to get an orange and black charger because I'm not a charger guy, but an orange and black Mustang once I finally make it based off of his orange and black charger and everything. So then I can have a weather woman in my car, Pat. Yes. But that would be the one time you finally could. Or you could just work for a radio, a TV station and drive a weather later. 
or no, it wasn't a weather lady. It was the, another actress who I make a joke and go, I'm not going to rape you. And then she calls oh, her mom and goes, this guy just made a joke. That's, that's why I was lost in the yeah, weather yeah. thing. I know you don't I forgot. Yeah, yeah. But he does fuck a weather girl at one point. <laughs> All right, Gianno. Um, <laughs> I think we did it. We did it? Yeah, man. Yeah, we did. If you know about uh, demon ciphers, let me know because don't want my soul. I haven't reached out to Brandon in a while. Brandon's been kind of goofy, but I will talk to him about demon ciphers and see what happens. Or, you know, uh, I do have some do other it. people. I, I you can reach talk. out to him. You've been I on this podcast more times than I have. Yeah, I could definitely reach out to him. I was actually thinking we may have somebody new I could reach out to as well. So oh, that, cool. that might be a new option. Could give us some input. Maybe we even have those two together. So I'll put that together. Yeah, I, I'll make sure I'm not here for that. <laughs> and uh, we may have a nice little treat for everybody this weekend. So we'll see what happens. Maybe have a nice little treat. So either way, hey, obviously the promotion is if you're if this comes, this will come out in time. I'll put it out tomorrow. Um, if you could come out to the recording, it'd be great. It's now a new location. We didn't talk about that at all. Um, should have, but unfortunately, City Steam, the brouhaha, the, the place itself. Was just too some, small of a venue. I wish it was that. It has some structural <laughs> damage. If you've gone to the website and you're like, how come it says shows are canceled? The shows are not canceled. They've had to be moved. These pipes burst when they had the really freezing cold a week or two ago. They had to, for the month of February... Ryan, who books it, had to scramble and he found uh, a banquet hall uh, or a function room at the Holiday Inn, Hartford. It's three minutes away from there. There's a full kitchen. There's a full bar. You can still, you'll still get eaten. You'll still get your drinks. You'll still have your last. It still will be great. It's the same show. And you still buy the tickets at the same place, comedycraftbeer.com. Still buy your tickets. If you have tickets already, you know, the City Steam, they're on your phone. It still works wherever. You can buy tickets at the door there as well. One show Friday, one show Saturday, both 8 o'clock. Please come on out and support it. We really appreciate you doing that. Um, I'm going to have a goofy weekend March 4th and 5th. March 4th, I'm performing at a weed show in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And then that's a Saturday. Sunday morning, I am hosting the Sham Rock and Roll 5K for BLR. Or I just yell, run. And then they all run. And when they're done, they drink heavily. St. Patrick's Day. So I'll be around people that are high one night and drunks in the morning the next night. So that'll be that'll be fun. I think when the two worlds kind of really collide. And I'm kind of happy I don't really do anything anymore. So I, I'll be sober and safe and fun. But um, Bobby, what do you got? <laughs> Buy tickets to your show. That's oh, what and I've thank got. you, Timothy. Love it. It was a great time. You run a good show. Comedy is a weapon. Does good shit. If you're in Western Mass and you see him putting on shows. Support him. He put, the DJ is dope. The DJ is the man. He played along with a joke while you got the t-shirt on. You bought from the guy. Hey, he's doing great shit. I'll have Timothy down here sometime soon to do a show for me in Derby. Yeah, the tickets for my Derby shows are going pretty well for the 25th and just starting to sell for the 11th. And I've got other ones coming up. So uh, if you just, instead of me giving you links, if you go to Eventbrite, if you're going to be in that area and want to get tickets to a show, just put comedy in derby at retro or comedy at retro and derby whatever and you'll come up the shows they're right there we did it and and uh don't forget to be a demon or uh gian gianu was that the word gianu gianu tune in <laughs> do it bobby if you can't join them beat them and don't be a piece of shit